Hey everyone, this is Casey Orr, producer of the Cheyenne Hills podcast. One topic of today's episode is a school survey set to be administered May 12th, the day the episode was set to air. In order that our viewers and listeners got the information ahead of time, we published that section of the episode early as a special edition. What follows is that episode in its entirety. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi everyone, Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Cheyenne Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Cheyenne Hills at CheyenneHills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. We are across the street and around the world. Cheyenne Hills. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Welcome back, Nathan. I'm glad you're here today. Good to be here. You always bring some cool stuff. So we're gonna you got we're gonna get all kinds of stuff oh. uh, talked about as we unpack this. But I just got I wanna I wanna go to First, I want to go to a heavenly perspective because we need it. That's a good place I to start. It. Yes. I, I don't know if you need it, but I need it. Oh. And then and then I've got a whole bunch of global stuff I want to tell you about. I haven't even talked to you about it yet. Oh, so good. you'll get to see that. Look forward to it. And then we've got some some I don't know what you call Lutzer. He's kind of some right now stuff. And then you got, I mean, hot off the press stuff. Right. So we're gonna go from the the global right to the hot off the press. Wow, I can't in, wait to see how this 20, turns yeah, out. I'm anxious for you to tie it all together. Oh, in 22 minutes we <laughs> yeah. established last 22 week. 22 minutes, exactly. <laughs> so this is this is a verse that I need often, okay? Yes, sir. So here's, here's, uh, here's how it goes. It says, uh, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things ab- that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. Mm-hmm. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Mm. What I think is so cool about that is there's perspective in that, but there's also hope and a future. And it's like yeah. you know, Christ is going to come back, and He is. We will be seated with Him, and our life is hidden in Him. And it's like it gives for me. It it has a way of helping me insulate against a whole bunch of things that I can't fix yes uh and i don't even know the answers to right you know and so i but i do know this i do know that we're supposed to keep our eyes on things above and you know sometimes people will kind of crashly say well he's so heavenly minded he's no earthly good it's like i think it's just the opposite i think when you're heavenly minded then you have the courage to be earthly good oh that's good because otherwise you just you just could be in uh panic or paralyzed right right you just live in fear. I mean, so much fear is in this world, and how to how to overcome fear. And uh, some somebody told me this yesterday, and I so I'm just going off what they said. But there's I guess 365 verses about fear mm-hmm. in the Bible. Don't know oh, if that's true or that. not, but that's what they said. Fascinating. Uh, it came out of a book they quoted to me, and, and the guy that was arrested in I think it's over in I don't know. There's a book in that this guy had written and he and he quoted these these 365 verses he read them over and over he was released on day 366 and so anyway it sustained him wow. that's what the whole the whole point was right. and i just thought man that's that is good we need to and this is the kind of verse that keeps me i don't know it keeps me in the right perspective so then i did today i got up and i it's like i have to make some calls and so I called our, our Aunt Francis in Africa, our mm-hmm. missionary in India, who is Subash. He's an Indian in India. Have That's you met great. Subash? I haven't, but you've mentioned him. And I, I want to. You meet know him. him just enough about you talking right. about it. And right. Francis is an Ugandan in Africa. Um, and then I called uh, Fotis in Greece, and uh, and just to try to. So I had this global, <laughs> around the world trip. That's great. Say. So th- just let me give you some kind of what's going on. Yes. Um, one of the things that Francis talked about in Africa, well, he, he talked about how I asked him, what's what's happening there? And he said, there's a lot of pressure right now put on by, and he didn't really say who, but I'm not, I don't want to throw any organization under the bus, but trying to uh, entice evangelicals to to not stick with the stuff, if you will. Okay. okay? They and, and they want they want Muslims and Catholics and Christians and Pentecostals. That's that's the terms that he used mm-hmm. to all band together and all be one. And and Fr- and Francis said, you know, we can do that on certain things, of course. Right. But but when it comes to doctrine and theology, it's like, well, we're still going to preach that, right. you know, Christ him crucified, and you know, this this kind of verse is something that we're going to live by. Good for him. 
And yeah. uh, and I asked him, I said, how much pressure? And well, Francis is really significant in Uganda because everything that comes in to the northern part of the, the country goes through him and his the organization. Mm -hmm. So they really have a control on that. He said most of what's people are getting, the, the wheels are getting wobbly, mm -hmm. is in the, the south where the big city is, Kampala, and in the middle sections, which, which there's a lot of different kind of... Uh, religion and a lot of prosperity gospel okay. lives there. Right. But he said that north where the where the LRA, where Coney, you remember that? Oh, yes. That was in the north. Wow. <clears throat> where all that oppression took place. He said, we are holding strong. We've got 108 churches over there that he's planted. Right. And then he's got, now Could he's got... Say that 10, again, 108. Yeah. There's what about, a blessing. There's over 5,000 people that we've kind of calculated that probably have made professions of faith in Christ that are part of these churches Amen. in, in uh, northern Uganda. And uh, Francis is so. Anyway, I called him just to check on him because he had some back issues, and he's my age. I think he's a I think he's a week older than I am, or something, a month mm -hmm. older than I am. So we're kind of the same okay. age group, and he's got some back issues. So I'm really concerned about him. Well, anyway, there's that. <clears throat> then I called Subash. Subash is in uh, Bangalore, India, and he said that the the COVID virus has hit so hard. He said there are literally bodies that are being that are. People are afraid to take care of these bodies that I've have died. I've read a little bit about this. Yeah, and it's just wow. he said it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to be able to get supposedly get out tomorrow because his he has a son that's going to be mar uh, get married, and uh, here in the states, and he's still a U.S. citizen. He's got dual citizenship. Okay, and so and he's got his he and his wife had this vaccine, and so they feel like they they can probably get the pass to get get out. Been certainly been pr praying for him, but mm -hmm. he said it is really dire. He said wow. they they have all these pharmaceutical companies in India. And uh, for whatever reason, they were shipping this these vaccines to every other country mm -hmm. and didn't take care of India. And now this oh. this variant, I guess, has come along okay. and has really hit hard. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of people getting sick and dying and um, because they don't have the vaccine mm -hmm. and or, or didn't have the herd immunity or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, India, if you've ever been there, there's Never people. On, there's a lot of people. Oh, I, my gosh. I, I'm looking forward to going there. But oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'll Hope be praying for you him sometime. too. Yeah, I would love that. And then, so I talked to Greece and, and uh, talked to Fotis in Greece. He said things are going okay. Their churches really aren't meeting yet. Um, and so they've been shut down for a year and a half, their oh churches. Oh, my goodness. And you think about that. I mean, we've we've had some freedoms here mm -hmm. in uh in, certainly in Wyoming, um, that I'm just really thankful for. I'm Amen. thankful for our leadership. I'm thankful for your part in help connecting with our leadership. Right. right. Because we Praise do have Lord. some some uh, openness that I think the rest of the world does not mm -hmm. doesn't understand or appreciate or, or even even tap into. Mm -hmm. And so, well, anyway, there's the there's what's happening in the globe. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, in unpacking all of that, the struggles that people are going through, our brothers and sisters in other places. Exactly. Um, that's really challenging, and I I, uh, I loved what what you just mentioned. Is it Francis in uh, Uganda? Uganda, yeah. Um, and just the struggles that he's going through. You know, the the challenges they face when you consider the oppression that they've had in the northern part of that country. Yes. And uh, knowing how we can pray for them, we're not yeah. going through that kind of oppression. That's right. And then you take Bangalore. I, I was just reading a book. I read a book um, to our children every morning over breakfast, and this one is about a missionary, Amy Carmichael. Okay. Who ministered in Bangalore, India. No kidding. And we're at the wow. part of the book where she just uh, got there. But um, the specific struggles of Christians trying to minister yes. in, in that culture, yeah. um, what a joy to know that that is continuing on today. Yeah. And then Greece, one of the early um, places of uh, uh, that, that the Apostle Paul yes. himself I brought know. the gospel to. Yeah. What a joy. So partnering with them in prayer... Uh, is something where we can lift them up and pray that they can lift us up as we're going through the persecutions we're going through. So I got to tell you something. When we were in Greece a year and a you know, half ago, whenever that was, this uh, Fotis's brother George. All right, okay. George was kind of our tour guide, and George has this theory, and I just thought, oh, this is cool. He said that you know we are the ones. And of course, he has his big. He's a big guy with his big Greek voice, and everything's yeah. Greek, you know. And I it's, love it. it's awesome. Yeah. But he says, you know, his. You know, he believes that God is, they have a vision for Greece. It's mm. amazing. And we're, we're partnering with them. But um, um, they, uh, oh, what was he, what was I going to say? He said that he believes that God is doing a thing in Greece right now. And he's actually coming back to the locations of where he started. And he's going to, 
going to evangelize Greece and then some maybe Turkey and and Israel. Wow. And so he sees this process. That's his theory. Well, I, it's kind of I love the though. idea. I do know? too. I love the idea. Yeah. I think it's it's cool. They've got a great strategy, and a great team, and Good. so we got to meet all of them. And yeah. I'm going to spend some time on the phone in the morning with Fotis. Fotis is like in one of these the days. I want to go to there, uh, go there with you as yeah, well. I tell you that, what, that, that was a trip, phenomenal. man. That was, yeah. that was awesome. okay. So yeah. So there was an, another guy that kind of spent some time over in Europe. I guess he wrote in Great Britain, right? Uh, uh, Marx, Karl Marx, did he? Yes, write he did. He was at the British uh, Museum. Well, he was in the uh, library that now is in the British Museum. Okay. So they transported it brick by brick into the British is Museum. Is that right? But it's I the, didn't know the that. Famous uh, London Library. Yeah. And, and I don't know if room. you were telling me this, or if I've read this somewhere in passing, but I guess. Marx is, you know, kind of an unkept fellow, and oh, uh, yes. I guess yeah. I guess he and Deodor didn't really exactly like to be close to each other, right? Right. And I guess he was a kind of, kind of uh, not too easy to be around. Well, one of the uh, historians of his life described him as a misanthrope. He hated people. Okay. He essentially also hated himself. Oh, wow. uh, he was not a happy man in any. Uh, huh. stretch of the imagination. Not only that, he allowed his children to starve, his wife to starve. A couple of his children literally starve died to from death. starvation. This man was evil in every sense of the word. Oh my gosh. And the ideas that he propounded um, oh, yeah. are ideas, of course, that have taken a life of their own, yeah. but they also are ideas that work against um, not only a biblical view of, of humanity, yeah. but also work against a human view of humanity. That's a good point, Nathan. Yeah, because yeah, everything he has, it's, a, it's against every, yeah, every fiber of even a common man. Right, exactly. Would, would, would notice that like, this is not, right. it doesn't make sense. And so when we talk about Marxism, yeah, I really appreciate right it. You had some, Do you mind? You dive, dive yeah. right in. That's what you're, we started you're talking about. I talked Lutzer. a bunch of... <laughs> no, it's great. I enjoyed it so much. We were talking about Lutzer last time you and I yes. uh, had a chance to talk, and Lutzer really brings this out about Marxism. Yes. And so what I want to do is kind of set the stage and talk about the, the ideology behind Marxism okay. and look at the methodology uh, that they, by which they implement their ideology. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about how we've watched this methodology in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. And so these are not things that are just abstract. There are concrete examples in... And it's right in our town. In our town. Yeah, so, we'd like to think that it's, it's not happening right, here, but right. it's, it is. Okay. Yes, sir. So Marxist, um, what's so intriguing about Marx, um, and, and it has to be said... Marx was right in pointing out that that oppression exists. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Lutzer, he, he brings that out very well in this wonderful book, which is entitled We Will Not Be Silenced. Which you is it. true of anything. People on the right or the left, they, they can see the problem. We just right. have completely different ways of, of getting there, exactly. of solving it. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and oftentimes it is easy to spot the problem. No. Um, I was reading a book about 12 years ago, I remember. It was uh, a book entitled The World is Flat. And three quarters of the book was spot on in its analysis of the problem. But the only problem with the book was at the last quarter. Yeah. The only way that we're supposedly built to, to climb out of the problem is to essentially double down on the things that caused the problem in the first place. Yeah. And so it is easy to understand that there are problems in the world. Yep. The question is, what is the answer? Right. And uh, so Marx, he's right in pointing out that oppression exists, but then he comes to this idea. He locates the problem as an external syst systemic oppression between classes. Okay. And in so doing, he ignores the biblical doctrine of original sin. And I love how uh, Dr. Lutzer puts this. He ignores the biblical doctrine of original sin and individual responsibility, and then sends his followers on a path of endless and unresolved conflict. Oh, wow. And so when we talk about the struggles in class warfare, which is where he placed it at the time, you begin to see a little bit of the angst we feel feel within uh, society today. And then he brings this out almost immediately after that, and I appreciate this from Dr. Lutzer. Marxists insist that schools must change their curricula to reflect their alternate, alternate view of society. Hmm. Therefore, works written by Western writers must be rejected, biz bizarre behavior must be normalized, and the need for socialism must be emphasized, and contrary views must be shamed. Wow. Now, remind me again when Marx, is that 1830s? It is 1850s. 1850s. That's right. Isn't it amazing that a guy sits down and writes all these things, and it's like reading, it's like reading the, you know, memos right. that are coming out right now. Right. Well, I do think that the philosophy, hmm. the ideas like this, when they become 
when they are praised, they become the policy of the next generation, yeah. which then becomes the education of the following generations. Oh, wow. And so now that's my own theory there, but I think you can see that linkage. Yeah. That because these, these things have been around for a while. They, oh, yes. They, they've popped up, you know, several different socialism has popped up. Right. Early 1900s, right. you know, all the way through. So, yeah, I can, I can see that. Philosophy matters. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people, when they think of a philosopher, they think of a person sitting in a dark room somewhere surrounded by books and thinking nonsense. Hmm. But that philosopher, if it's someone that is listened to, is a man that will direct future generations. Hmm. And that's why philosophy matters. And that's why whenever, whenever we teach philosophy at the University of Wyoming or in, in our schools or wherever it may be, it matters what is being taught. Yeah, for sure. And does it hold up to natural law? Right. That and that's you know they can you can go out on all these tangents and mm-hmm. and if you don't have any kind of grounding, mm-hmm. um, boy, people can get way, you know, they can understand that there's there's nothing on this table's not real and it, right. those things are just crazy to me. Exactly. It's like how do you? Right. You talk about deception. You know, mm-hmm. that's such so deceiving. And I just keep thinking this whole idea of deception, see that no one deceives you. You know, we've talked about this a lot Mm -hmm. and you know, Satan is the master deceiver. And, uh, one of, one of the things that I think is so deceptive today, you know, you, you can be born biologically male and people think that, that no, I'm, I'm going to identify as female. You talk about deception. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? That doesn't come from God. Exactly. That is, that is from the pit. I mean, If that's not a doctrine of demons, I don't, I, what, I don't know what else you call that. Well, when we talk about that deception, brother, it, one of the challenges is that there are times where people attempt to drive this, this pressure and drive this uh, um, uh, uh, feeling of oppression. So let's go back. Okay. It, um, in March of 2019, we've not really talked about this uh, publicly very much, but in March of 2019, there was a very sad incident that happened here in Cheyenne, Wyoming at McCormick Junior High. Yeah, right. And in that incident, one uh, student placed somewhere between four and five, that's what the news reports tell us, four and five posters up in those schools. And those posters were had some very... Uh, bad, wrong-headed arguments placed on those, not arguments, just kind of slanderous uh, uh, statements on them. Okay. Now, those posters came down before the students came in. And that, uh, that student was also reprimanded and actually dismissed from school, suspended from school as well, as a result of these four posters. Um, what the news report also says is that in the weeks leading up to that, uh, sometime before, there had been uh, strife between individuals bringing uh, LGBTQ plus flags. And then sadly, because we're talking junior high school here, there were other kids that were starting to bring Confederate flags. And Hmm. there was essentially this struggle going on in a junior high school. That whole uh, incident ought to break our hearts. Yeah, no kidding. Something like that's happening. Yeah. So, but one of the interesting things that came out of that is there was a lot of pressure in the Cheyenne press where they constantly repeated the statements made by the, on those posters. And then there are some within the community that began to advocate that uh, we should start a whole new kind of diversity training. Okay. And uh, rather than getting into all of the parties involved in that, uh, they begin to make the statement that a current kind of uh, teaching, which is actually has been very good. Uh, this was announced last week that is a program called the Oveas program. And the Oveas program has actually shown, a, uh, it's done a lot of good in our community. Okay. Over the last decade or so, uh, sometime before that, uh, about the time it was implemented, incidences of bullying in our school yep. dropped from 24% down to about 10% reported last year. Wow. That's a drop of 14%. Uh, that is phenomenal. So Not only works. that, when we talk about kids just being rude to one another, that happens. So when you talk about 10% that remains, it's not good that anyone should bully anyone at any time. Exactly. But I think that the state of, or the, the Laramie County School District number one has proven that they are taking that on yep. and making vast strides. But what some outside influences began to say is that we need to do away with Olveus and implement something from a group called the Western uh, Educational Equity Assistance Center, okay. known as WEAC. But here's the difference between Olveus and WEAC. 
Olveus, or, or I'm sorry, WEAC is an organization that provides teaching resources from the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is an organization that has placed two highly respected organizations on its hate list. And mm. by those, we're talking about Alliance Defending Freedom. That has successfully argued all the way up several times to the United States Supreme Court and wins more than 70% of their cases. They're widely respected. They're called a hate group by this other group. Wow. Uh, they call the, the WEAC supports. That's right. Wow. Family Research Council is another one that's been placed on there. Is that right? It's, it's astonishing. Oh, wow. So, but but wow. uh, they're the ones that are weighing into this program. Another one, the Anti-Defamation League, uh, over the last several years has promoted legislation that would target people of faith mm. who uh, hold to a scientific biblical understanding of human sexuality. And what I mean by that yep. is the Equality Act. Yeah. Oh, right. The, another one is uh, on their website, on the WEAC website, there are 24 books that are considered anti-racist, but they include books from people like Ibram X. Kendi and Robin D'Angelo, who promote critical race theory, which is a theory derived from Marxism, yep. critical theory. Kendi, by the way, has called capitalism and racism co-joined twins and attacks capitalism as racist. Uh, another one, under the heading of LGBTQ+, a resource list for teachers, uh, there's an entire list of material that promotes ideas like intersectionality, that your value, your worth as a human being is described by all of the different oppressed groups. Again, it's the oppressor-oppressed dichotomy. Yep. That's Marx. Exactly, Marx. And it promotes queer and transgender art, among many other issues. And so when we look at that, this is a survey that is supposed to happen on May the 12th in Laramie County School District number one. Okay. And so we look at how bad idea ideology right. creeps into a civil society. Okay, so back this up, is it right Back here. up just real quick. So this is this uh, WEAC is going to mm -hmm. be sent out to students? Every, every student from fifth grade and up. In Every Laramie student School in Laramie District District County one, and yeah. they're going to give a, fill out a survey based on asking qu what kind of questions. Well, see, that's the thing. We would love to know what the questions are. I actually, um, a group of people have worked together to try to get uh, an answer as to what questions are going to be on this test. Hmm. And what they have claimed is that it's proprietary. Now, that doesn't make any sense, brother proprietary to the point where every student from fifth grade and up is going to see it and can take but photos. But they can't show it to you? But you can't show it to parents. Oh, wow. And that's the issue that we... So no parent's going to see this until it shows up with that kid's name on it, and he's going to fill this out on May 12th? That's that's right. That's what is supposed to happen. And wow. we, we believe that wow. um, students should not be taught anything or tested on anything that isn't first available to parents. Yeah. Because that well, parental role in education is so important. Well, and there's so much of these kind of questions that are leading questions. Right. You know, it makes you think that, oh, it's possible for me to identify one way or another. It's right. like, you know, those those kinds of questions are so deceptive. Exactly. And it, especially for a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old mind. I, mm -hmm. I mean, this is this falls into that category of, you know, if you cause one of these little ones who love me to stumble, right. it's going to be better for you to have a millstone wrapped around your neck. Exactly. It's like, you, we can't. We can't cause even leading questions that would cause it. Right, they're called value-laden questions. But so, yeah. so all this is stemmed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I got to go back, and I don't think we're going to have to go over time on this. So sure. we'll tell our producer. But um, back uh, fifteen, so tw it's about twenty years ago now. Mm -hmm. I was in Boulder County. I was a pastor in Boulder County. Okay, and uh, they asked us to show up because when pastors to speak to this issue, it was bullying in schools. And they said, if they change this word from, you know, we will not tolerate bullying, bullying to, no, they want to change the word tolerance to tolerance. Uh, we will not tolerate. And it, the, the way it read was uh, there will be no bullying or bullying will be punished or something like that. And they wanted to change it to something that had tolerance in it. Okay. Changing that one word changed everything. And this mm -hmm. lady, who was absolutely right, said, if this changes, then everything's going to change. And I said, you know, I, I read the thing, and I said, you know, we all agree that bullying is wrong. Agree. All agree on that. I mean, yes. it's like nobody wants that. Right. And, it, it, we, you know, and they had a bunch of examples of kids that have been bullied. And I'm, you know, I'm extremely sorry, and I don't want that. Mm -hmm. But the way that they're approaching this was to open this all up. And this is the kind of stuff exactly. that has gotten through. Right. It's all this, instead of punishing the person that's doing the bullying, mm -hmm. it's, it's allowing leading questions to be asked to every student mm -hmm. that it's like, 
where's the protecting of innocence of a 10 year old? Right. Where was that happen? Where does that gone? Exactly. And is it wrong for me to care about that? I'm, mm-hmm. s- some people think that it is. Well, I think so. And those value laden questions that begin to tilt the mind one way or the other, uh, yeah. questions can educate yeah. as well as ask. Yes. And that's something that that's is true. lost in the conversation. Yeah. And that's the reason why even a student climate survey test or uh, um, just a survey uh, has such importance. This has been very informative. We're going to come back. Thanks so much for joining us. I know this; these are deep issues, but this is the stuff. This is like yeah. right now right. in our world, in our town. And so right. I'm Nathan, thank you. Thanks for yeah. being on top of these things. Thanks for giving us some historical context. And I do hope that we can all keep our minds on things that above Amen. and not on things of the world. This world is, is, is a messed up thing, but we got to do our best while, while, until Christ returns. That's our, that's our charge, and so we're going to do our, be- our very best. God bless you all. Be strong and very courageous. Amen. All right.